and thank you for joining the Omni Board of California RCA session. My name is Rachel Zemser, and I'm a certified food scientist and certified culinary scientist through RCA. I have over 25 years of experience in both food science and culinary arts, where I've helped brands, small and large, bring innovative products to life. I'm excited to be here today on behalf of the Almond Board of California. Almonds are a staple in my R&D lab, as you can see. And today, I'll be demonstrating three plant-based formulations that use various almond forms as a secret ingredient or a secret weapon to deliver nutritious, plant-based creations across global cuisines. These formulations will highlight easy ways to use nutrient-dense ingredients, including almonds, that deliver on consumer demand for plant-based and free-from options without sacrificing taste and texture. As a preview of what you'll see today, I'll be starting with a vegan meatless patty that combines almond flour and pea protein. Then we'll transition into a delicious Spanish-style romesco sauce with almond flour and diced roasted almonds. And lastly, a muhumara sauce with almond flour and roasted almond butter. After this demo, I'll be joined by Dr. Swati Kalkunkar, who is the Associate Director of Nutrition Research at the Almond Board of California. Dr. Swati will be adding further context to the nutrition side of the recipes. Following the demo, both Dr. Swati and I will be available for a live Q&A, so please feel free to drop your questions into the chat box during the session, and we look forward to answering those questions afterwards. And of course, please do drop by the Almond Board of California's virtual booth for more information about almonds, these recipes, the links, or if you have any remaining questions. Before we get into the demo, let's first review the benefits of formulating with almonds. Almonds are an essential ingredient for formulating food scientists like me. They're available in 14 forms, including diced, chopped, sliced, ground, butter, milk, and more. That's more than any other tree nut. There are many forms and textures, along with their clean flavor profile, which can be paired with almost any other sweet or savory flavor out there, makes it an easy ingredient to work with in almost any application. Almonds also pack a powerful punch of nutrients to the finished food application. Now, for all you food scientists out there who work in grams and percentages, almonds are made up of 21 grams of protein, 12 and a half grams of dietary fiber, and 50 grams of good unsaturated fat. They also have magnesium, antioxidants, and vitamin E. This is, of course, per 100 grams of almond, or in consumer retail portion sizes, three and a half servings. Knowing the grams of nutrients per 100 gram portion will help formulators and food scientists incorporate and deliver as much almond plant-based nutrients as they can fit into their application and serving size of that finished food item. Now, some of my favorite almond ingredients for formulating are almond flour and defatted almond flour. Defatted almond flour has the fat pushed out, increasing the percentage of fiber and protein per 100 grams. Some versions of defatted almond flour have almost double the amount of protein per 100 grams when compared to regular almond flour. So that small switch to a defatted almond flour from almond flour can generate an even higher protein product. I use both almond flour and defatted almond flour as a core ingredient in numerous applications like baked goods, soups, nutrition bars, sauces, dips, and more. They provide bulk and texture to the baked goods. They thicken soups and can really boost up the protein levels in vegan-based protein bars. Almond flour is also an ideal choice for formulating gluten-free and grain-free bread and baked good type products. Overall, both these almond powders are extremely functional while still delivering their unique nutritional benefits within those products. Because of all these great nutritional metrics, using almonds can add serious nutritional value to on-pat claims. As the demand for free from label option continues to increase, almonds provide a fantastic solution for any clean, clear, and free from product labels. Gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, meat-free, vegetarian, vegan, plant-based, you name it. Almonds can fit into any of these product categories. Consumers are more focused than ever on nutrient-dense ingredients that provide better for you benefits, and almonds are a great avenue to do just that. Okay, so now that we've laid the groundwork for why almonds, let's see them in action. It's no surprise that we're talking plant-based today. According to Innova Market Insights, plant-based eating has reached global phenomena status, and its growing mainstream appeal has inspired food scientists and developers to tap into our most creative ideas, using as many plant-based vegetarian ingredients as possible. This is how we came up with the idea of an almond protein patty. It looks and tastes similar to meat, but is completely vegan and has a plant-based protein base. 
Now, the base of this burger is made up primarily of almond flour and pea protein, thus making it a very high-protein plant-based burger. The almond flour here offers a unique texture and clean flavor that helps serve as a base for a wide range of finished flavors. Now, while I have selected my seasonings to be fairly simple for this demonstration, the clean base would allow for the food scientists to have their own customization. Okay, now let's review what's going into my almond patty. The base of this patty is almond flour and pea protein. Now I want to note that the pea protein is first prehydrated with water for about 15 minutes. This is done because dry TVP, textured vegetable protein, is hard and crunchy, but to bring out the bouncy and chewy texture that resembles meat, it needs to be hydrated. And the best way to do that is to give it a hydration period before adding your other ingredients. Now for the fat component. The fat component is olive oil and cocoa butter. I have these two right here. And I use a cocoa butter because it's a solid fat, it's a solid plant fat. You could also use a coconut oil or a palm fat, but basically you want a solid fat in there because it simulates the, the typical hard fats found in, in animal fat. And now for the seasonings. The seasoning components are very simple in this burger. I have salt, some freeze-dried onion and garlic. I've got some yeast extract, which gives the patty a meaty flavor and I have some uh, apple cider vinegar, which gives a little bit of a tang and a sweetness and it helps stimulate that, that final meat flavor. Now it's really up to the food scientists to flavor this burger into any concept that fits into their brand. It can be flavored with smoked, grilled, natural meat flavors, onion, garlic, whatever you want to put in there, um, you can make it your own. Now for color, I'm using a beet powder or a beet juice powder. This is typically used in plant-based burgers to give a little bit of a pink natural meat looking color or shade. Then I also use a little bit of psyllium husk for texture. Psyllium husk is basically a little bit of extra fiber and it helps give the patty a firm texture and holds it together while heating. And lastly, the binding. To bind the burger together, I use methyl cellulose, a hydrochloid which has the ability to gel when heated. So it works really, really well. Other binding ingredients that also could work as an alternative include citrus fiber, xanthan gum, wheat gluten, or konjac. All right, great. We're going to now mix this all together. The process is really very simple. I've already rehydrated my textured vegetable protein, and now I'm going to add in all the other ingredients. All right, so now I'm going to mix this up. As you can see, it's beginning to look more and more like real hamburger. If I were a manufacturing plant, then this would all be in big tanks with mixers and it would be very fast and efficient. But kind of trying to simulate production and doing it by hand here. All right, so there you have it. You can see that it really has the texture, color, and consistency of real meat. I use a hamburger press to simulate a production scenario that would make perfectly round burgers. Usually I have to chill the burgers first before I, before I turn them into the shape and there wasn't really enough time for that. So I have a pre-frozen patty that I made earlier and I'm going to cook it now. And while I'm cooking, Dr. Swati is going to dig deeper into almond nutrition. Hi everyone, Rachel has it right. Consumers are increasingly opting for plant-based diets, and we certainly see a transition from protein that could walk on four legs to protein that grows on plants. That's where almonds come in. Almonds as a plant-based protein offer a powerful nutrient package with over 21% plant protein, over 12% fiber, and about 40% of healthy, unsaturated fat per serving which can help consumers feel full for longer. In fact, results from clinical studies suggest that a daily snack of almonds may help keep hunger at bay. Plus, almonds have been tied to heart health, lowering blood sugar levels, and being good for gut health. Almonds offer six grams of protein, but appear low on the protein quality scale due to limiting amino acids. As a rule of thumb, most plant proteins contain limiting amino acids. The amino acids that are most limited in plant proteins are lysine, methionine, and cysteine. 
Nuts, seeds, and grains tend to be deficient in lysine, but high in methionine and cysteine. On the other hand, legumes tend to be deficient in methionine and cysteine, but high in lysine. So the two food groups complement each other in terms of missing amino acids, and for that reason, are a great combination of protein sources to add to your diet. And that's the benefit of this vegan patty recipe compared to some other singular protein vegetarian patty options. The combination of almond and pea protein offers the benefits of complementary proteins to the consumer. And speaking of protein, one almond form Rachel discusses today is almond protein powder, also known as defatted almond flour. If you are unfamiliar with the form, almond protein powder is actually almond flour with a percentage of the oil removed, resulting in a source of protein without as many calories or fat per serving when compared to regular almond flour. Currently, there are a wide variety of almond protein powders in the market, each with a different nutrient composition. Utilizing almond forms and recipes like this can really elevate the nutrition values of a product when compared to a regular flour. And with that, Rachel, let's see the final burger. Thanks for that information, Dr. Swati. Let's take a look at my cooked almond burger. Here's my patty, it's all cooked. It's moist on the inside, but totally and nicely browned on the outside. It tastes amazing. It has a nice nutty flavor from the almond and a realistic meat-like texture from the textured pea protein. I wanna reiterate what I mentioned earlier. You can use any seasoning profile you like to create the plant burger that fits your brand. There's dozens of seasonings and spices, yeast extracts, smoke flavors, and more that you can just add it right in there. Now in a food service environment where your patty can be made and consumed fresh, you can add fresh ingredients like carrots or zucchini for color and extra crunch. But make sure you adjust the water level since the carrots and the zucchini may bring extra water to the formula and throw off the final texture. Reduce your water if this is the case. This vegan meat mixture is very pliable and it's just really like real hamburger. Let's pull it out here again. Um, really, you can, you can make, I mean, you have to chill it first to get it a little bit firmer, but you can make meatballs, you can make a deep fried falafel ball, you can season it with Italian seasonings, you can do a lot of different things. You can even maybe make a plant-based meatloaf if you want with the ketchup on top. A lot of different ways to use this mixture. Now this almond patty uses almond flour, but if you're looking for a higher protein vegan patty, swap out flour for deep added almond flour. Switching almond flour to a deep fatted almond flour creates a final product with higher protein and fiber and lower fat levels due to the fat being pushed out and those ratios being adjusted as Dr. Swaney discussed. The higher protein version can boost up the protein level in the final product, making it a great option for individuals on a higher protein diet. For our final two recipes, we'll be taking trips around the world with both Romesco and Muhammara sauces. Romesco is a rich Spanish sauce of charred tomatoes, roasted red peppers, pureed, and thickened with toasted almonds. Other ingredients like vinegar, pepper flakes, garlic, and onions refine the sauce even further. Now, Muhammara sauce is a spicy red pepper sauce from the Middle East. It also relies on ground almonds to give it a rich texture. It's sweetened with pomegranate concentrate, and it's made even thicker and sweeter by using tomato paste instead of diced tomatoes. Now, both of these sauces have some similar ingredients like tomatoes and red peppers, but they also each branch off into their own unique flavor profiles. Let's review the Romesco ingredients. Romesco has a base of tomato and roasted red peppers. It's got tomatoes, some roasted red peppers, and it's flavored with garlic and onion, lemon juice, Spanish sherry vinegar, red pepper flakes for some extra heat, and it's thickened with almonds. And for this recipe, we use both almond flour and roasted almond pieces just to give it an extra crunch. And of course, we also have olive oil and salt. Let's mix this one up and then we can get into the Muhammara ingredients. All right, now that this one's mixed up, it's a pretty straightforward process. In a manufacturing plant, it would just be add all the ingredients and mix it and heat it up for shelf stability. And we'll get more into that in a few minutes though. All right, let's now get into the Muhammara sauce. 
Now, muamara can be made with a variety of nut forms, typically walnuts or almonds, but today we're making it with almond flour and roasted almond butter for some extra roasted earthy notes. Now, muhamara has a red pepper base and it's flavored with cumin and lemon juice. It's got salt. It's thickened with almond flour. And again, in our case, we used almond butter to give it like a roasted taste. We're also using pomegranate concentrate and tomato paste, both of which make it sweeter. And the tomato paste actually makes it even a little bit thicker. Muhammara has a really thick texture and it really lends itself well to a lot of different dip application. All right, let's mix this one up too. This sauce has a really deep red color. Because of all the roasted red peppers in there, it can have a lot of little black specks in it, which makes it, gives it more of a roasted note or roasted appearance. It really depends on, the, uh, on where you get your roasted red peppers from and how, how much they're roasted will contribute to the amount of black flakes that you'll see in there to give it that authentic look. All right, so here we have our muhamara, and here we have our romesco. Now, I want to have a quick food safety note here for, for all of us food scientists out there who are manufacturing food products. Both of these sauces are not naturally acidic due to the non-acid ingredients like red peppers and almonds. Because of this, if they are going to be made shelf stable, they have to be acidified per FDA regulations. They have to have their pH dropped to under 4.6 before thermal processing to ensure self shelf stability. Now this pH drop can be in the form of citric acid or lemon juice, whichever one you choose. Um, both of these will work well in the sauce because they're already naturally tangy. After the pH is dropped, it would then be heated to 185 to 220 at a time and temperature designated by the FDA and by the manufacturing safety experts in your plant. This rule is only for shelf-stable jarred and canned versions. A food service version that will be served around the time when it's been made does not have these pH requirements. So if you're going to make a refrigerated version, um, it's going to be put in the refrigerator for a certain amount of time, it's not gonna be held for months and months in a shelf-stable jar, then you don't have to worry as much about the pH. Unless, of course, you wanna just alter it for your own flavor preference. So here are some final examples of how you can use these sauces in your food. The final romesco sauce is creamy and thick, and the roasted nut pieces and almond flour leave a crunchy texture and overall richness from the healthy almond fats. The muhamara has a wonderful spice to it and can be used as a dip or a spread in vegan meals to add extra heat. You can add extra red pepper if you want extra heat. The romesco or the muhamara can be thinned out to make a soup, um, such as this one right here. We thinned it out to make a tomato-style base soup, similar to a gazpacho or a tortilla soup. Um, it can also be used as a, as a marinade. You can marinate meat and fish, uh, chicken in there, and then you can cook it with that sauce on it. And you know, here's the romesco sauce. Um, it's usually served with these Spanish style onions, which are kind of hard to get here, but I use asparagus um, and it's the same kind of experience, a roasted vegetable with the romesco sauce uh, put on top of it. Now, in all of these recipes, the almond flour can be swapped for defatted almond flour to create a thicker spread or paste. Um, it can also be used on a sandwich or on a condiment. It could even be packaged into a squeezable pouch uh, style product for people who want to eat it on the go. I want to just mention again that defatted almond flour has the fat pushed out, which makes the final protein and fiber numbers higher in the finished product, which is why the final product is usually thicker than a regular, than what it would be with a regular almond flour. The defatted almond flour has a smooth, fine texture as well. So it just makes the products like smoother and, and thicker, basically. Now for food service, there's a lot of other options. You can add bigger almond pieces. You can increase the toasted flavor by toasting it even more. You can use uh, almond butter, either blanched or roasted. Um, you can blend it to a smooth consistency or, or a more textured consistency. All right, and that wraps up our demonstration. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope today's discussion unleashed new inspiration in your formulations, arming you with new ways to add almonds and the nutritional benefits to your creations. All three of these recipes can be found on the Almond Board of California's booth. If you're interested in learning more about plant-based proteins, the different almond forms, or more recipes incorporating almonds, visit almonds.com. Now we'll be joining you live to take any questions on the recipes or discussion around almond protein. 